while the Biden administration is working to push through another must-pass spending bill to keep the government open beyond September 30th. There's one emergency provision of the bill Biden wants lawmakers to push, a $13.7 billion provision to help, you guessed it, Ukraine. According to responsible statecraft, if the new aid package goes through, it will mean the U.S. has allocated nearly $70 billion for this war, which tops Russia's entire defense budget, by the way, in 2021. Meanwhile, Just Foreign Policy analyzes spending and finds that if the request passes, the U.S. will have spent more than triple what the U.S. spent in Afghanistan in the first year after 9-11, adding that interest alone costs, that could uh, cost an additional $14 billion over 10 years. Um, that's a lot of money. It's incredible stuff. Money. It's incredible. And just for some context, obviously medical debt has grown over the course of the pandemic, but prior to the pandemic, I believe it was uh, valued at about $81 billion to cancel all medical debt in America. So think of whether you or your loved ones, people you know who have been suffering under the yoke of these horrible medical bills that are very difficult to anticipate, how many people have deferred medical treatment out of fear that they will be hit with the bill that they cannot afford. We're talking about all these debt jubilees and student debt cancellations and why don't we cancel other kinds of debt first? Like, I completely agree. I've been pushing for medical debt cancellation for a very long time, and we're told repeatedly we can't afford those kinds of things. We can never have money to help the American people. And look, a commensurate amount of money is being spent at, for an international entanglement that is not really entirely clear and has not been, I would argue, sufficiently explained why America has this kind of... Um, an economic investment in it to begin with. I think it really disrupts a lot of what we've been told historically about what the country can and cannot do, what, where money comes from, what kind of spending causes inflation, or what kind of spending is at least um, discouraged with that as an excuse. And I think the government, both parties, have a lot of explaining to do as you start to increasingly juxtapose our enormous, limitless military spending with the crises ongoing in Mississippi and any number of things in the United States that the money could be We always spent find on. money for this. We always find money for this, for foreign adventurism. And, uh, and you know, we should remember as we're comparing it to what was spent in Afghanistan, a massive amount of money of lives lost uh, in, in the wars there. For what benefit? We left. The country was returned to um, the, the control of the people we were fighting. Uh, we gave up eventually. That's, that was what spending those resources got us there. So are we repeating that? Are we, uh, have we learned any lessons whatsoever? What is the compelling interest this time? Is there any, why is there never a limit? There's never a, well, this is what we're willing to do, this is what we're willing to spend, and then that's it. It's, it always gets exceeded it beyond, far beyond what the appetite of the American people is. Uh, that is not even being consulted. No one cares what the American people think or want about. Yeah. Like, who, who agrees that we should be doing this? You will find, I'm sure there's some people, but you will find far less public sentiment in support of this than there is in Congress, where it's virtually universal, some, some Republicans now against, uh, maybe a few of the kind of more squad-leaning Democrats mm -hmm. having some questions about this, although still not really publicly turning yeah. against it. It is unanim virtual unanim unanimity in the government. There's not unanimity of thought among the people. The people are wondering how, how and why this money is being spent like this. Yeah, absolutely. And it's curious. I'd, I'd be curious to see whether or not there are any kind of force the vote moments from whether or not it's the few people on the left or the few people on the right who are in Congress who uh, have been publicly objecting to this war, at least demanding more of an explanation for our involvement, whether or not um, you know Biden's pa broader package is in fact held up by some of these people on principle, as they can do, as Manchin and Cinema have been kind of famous in doing over the course of the Biden administration as a whole. You know, we have, uh, there's a different conversation happening right now about whether or not Bernie Sanders is going to hold up, I believe it's appropriations bills, over uh, the uh, the so-called Joe Manchin side deal to the, uh, the, um, the climate package that everybody heralded, which would undo a lot of the climate progress in that bill. Um, so I think this is a really interesting political moment that will teach the public a lot about what is possible and what is not, and to the extent to which politicians are willing to say they object to a lot of things, but ultimately, you know, oftentimes get away with not actually 
putting their money where their mouth is. Yeah, we need um, the the anti-interventionist Republicans and Democrats to come together and start opposing this stuff constructively. This is something. This is something the American regime wants from from the Biden administration generals, uh, the military industrial complex, and then many top Republicans are going along with it. Right. They'll, they'll oppose. They'll fight every, every inch of the Biden agenda. They'll fight every part of it except this. Yeah. They won't I, fight this. And we should be clear. I mean, the way that spending works is not as though there's like a pot of money and because $70, 70 billion dollars went to Ukraine, there is no longer $70 billion to go to the United States. I mean, that's not how the budget works. However, I think it is a demonstration of how the government is willing to spend, is willing to print money for one set category right. of things, not another category of things. So even if they were to persist in Ukraine, I do think this is a leverage opportunity to say, okay, if you're willing to come up with $70 billion for Ukraine, why can't you help the citizens of Flint, Michigan or Mississippi or any number it, of it, the dozens, I think almost thousands of cities in the United States that are suffering from a water crisis or the other infrastructure issues that are really hurting you're, Americans. You're right that it doesn't work exactly like a pot of money because the government can just print more money, that kind of thing. But doing that also has economic consequences, right? It, it arguably, many economists will argue, it contributes to inflation. Um, it, you know, it has to it has to be paid for some way. Down, you know, down the line, they can borrow, they can wait. It's not like literally a pot of money that then they just run out. But it does have economic consequences. So what they prioritize matters, and this is what they prioritize, right? And, and, I, and you're not wrong that you know, while I would not necessarily um, probably spend money on many things you want to spend, if we're spending money at all, why is why is this the thing that gets that the money gets spent on? You Medical know, debt could be a but yeah. Be a better I do cause. think we agree on quite a few things. I don't. I, would you? We agree about medical debt. Does it not seem to be a priority to make sure that a capital yeah. city of one of our states doesn't have brown water coming out of the tap or the ongoing crisis? In we need Michigan to uh, change lead pipes. Uh, need to with be changed. And uh, energy prices absolutely. as we head into the summer. Any and in the yeah. winter rather. Any number of things I can imagine we would agree on, and a, a large number of Americans would agree on as well. Frankly, medical debt cancellation is enormously popular. And again, I'm sorry. There was only one candidate in the race who was advocating for it, and it got very little media attention because there is not an interest with on Capitol Hill and among elites in actually doing things that serve the interests of the American people. So we'll continue to follow the story, and I, for one, am very happy that we're having more of a focus on uh, the things that Americans, uh, the American government can do because so much of the conversation, oftentimes by elites, is a litany of excuses about why they can't do anything to actually help the people that they've been elected to serve. We'll have more rising for you after this.